MCCLA. Welcome to the live broadcast of Metropolitan Community Church, Los Angeles. Good morning, and would you join me in our call to worship? God has called us to this place. What do you see? We see many people who model for us God's joyous embrace of all people. God has brought us to this place. What do you hear? We hear God's hope that we are able to see each person as our sister or brother. God has challenged us to open our lives and hearts to others. What will you do? We will do only one thing. Welcome everyone in God's name. Please rise and body your spirit. the church alive, the one who is gathered here in this place, in this community, and beyond, allowing the Holy Spirit to be present with us as we worship, as we gather, as we give thanks to our God who has created us, who gives us life, and who is with us as we pray and praise. So blessings upon this gathering, I ask, indeed, with our brother and Savior, Jesus, our beloved Christ. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Well, welcome everyone to Founders Metropolitan Community Church. And is there anyone who's visiting with us for the first time today? I didn't think so. I thought everybody is home folk here. Well, you know who I am, you know who you are, and we're gathered in the right place. <laughs> Reverend Bat Langley said, I'm truly delighted and honored to be with you along with Reverend Melissa, the staff, and, and everyone here this morning as our beloved senior pastor is still with his family in England. Reverend Dr. Neil Thomas as he is um, 
in bereavement as well as celebration, uh, the life of his dad, who, as many of you know, passed away last week. So to you, Reverend Neal, we, you are with us in our thoughts and prayers, and we are so glad that you are with your family today, as we are gathered with family and community this day as well. Well, the black pads are being passed along to you, and as you know, please go ahead and fill out information in there, especially if you are uh, have any uh, changes in any of your information, email, etc. cetera. Um, that one changes a lot along with cell phones. Um, but if those have changed or your, your physical address, please indicate it and let us know if we need to be in touch with you. Uh, we also have a few announcements. Uh, as you know in your bulletin, it, you don't need to use it as your personal air conditioner today because can you feel it? Can you feel it? There is some air conditioning going on in the building today, so. <laughs> so we uh, thank the board and everyone who made that possible. Woohoo! thank you, board member. Uh, so we have a nice, comfortable time, so we have no excuse but to hear the word of God, amen? amen? Amen. So let's talk about some of the upcoming announcements that we have. As you know, in your bulletin, there's a lot of information uh, for you, but some to highlight. There's that beautifully decorated box out in the uh, foyer in the lobby, and that is where you can bring your uh, donations for the backpack drive. So join the drive. This is for kids uh, and youth who are in need. We are going to be uh, giving 30 backpacks at Jeff Griffith Youth Center, as well as to children at domestic violence shelters and beyond. So there will be a list next week that if you wonder, well, what should I bring? Um, just go shopping and have fun. See what a child would like that gives them dignity to go back to school. But if you want specifics, there will be a list available for you next week. Today, after the 11 o'clock service, guys, you're stepping out to brunch. So go ahead and meet at the information table after the 11 o'clock service and meet with Michael Sutherland or others from the men's group and uh, join a local, uh, a local uh, restaurant to have a bite to eat. This Tuesday, one of our spiritual education programs is Bayanihan. Bayanihan means community. We have a theme going today. You're catching it. We, that uh, is our Filipino, Filipino ministry study group. Uh, it meets on the second and fourth Tuesdays at uh, 6.30 for food. Please come hungry. The food is great, and the study is even richer. So um, attend that, 6.30, and the study starts at 7.15. And on Wednesday, we have another one of our spiritual education courses. This has been um, a real delight and a joy to be able to facilitate this discussion. This is on the book, 12 Steps to a Compassionate Life. Uh, myself and a few others have been facilitating it. It's, it, it, it's really been life-changing and life-moving. Uh, you are more than welcome to come and participate. You do not have to have been there at the beginning. Just come and join us at 7.30 uh, in the Hunter Room, and we'll catch you up to date. This Saturday, if you are a man who identifies as one who has HIV or full-blown AIDS, you are most welcome to come uh, every fourth Sunday in the Hunter Room from noon to 2 o'clock for a group of not just support but of, uh, of education. Uh, you can see Tori um, afterwards if you have any questions, and he can give you as many answers as he has uh, and be able to, uh, to assist you in any way. Well, coming up, many of you know that our Taze uh, service on Wednesday nights that had been at 6.30 uh, has been on hiatus, and in its place, we are going to be beginning Mass Without the Guilt. It is possible. It is very possible. So on Wednesday, August 14th, please join us in the chapel at 6.30 p.m. This is a, uh, a Catholic with a small c, a Catholic-style uh, service, which means it'll be done in 45 minutes. <laughs> so, please, so please come and join. Some weeks will be in English, some in Spanish, but we all understand the Word of God. So uh, come and join us at 6.30 to 7.15 in the chapel on Wednesdays. And just our last announcements, Bayanihan is sponsoring Bayanihan Bingo. It's this Saturday. If you have not bought your tickets yet, you, there will be a table outside in the, um, on the sidewalk to which you're welcome to purchase your tickets after church today. If you uh, didn't bring your money today, don't worry, show up on Saturday. This is a fundraiser for 
Uh, this is a fundraiser for our churches in the Philippines, um, so please avail yourself of that. A great time, and again, the food is awesome. So please join us this Saturday. The end of summer is coming, which means we have our, yes indeed, our MCC beach party. Um, this year, however, we're going to be moving it to Long Beach, Los Alamitos Beach. It is from 10 to 4 on Saturday, August 24th. We changed the location to here from Dockweiler um, for a primary reason. It is very accessible to public transit. Um, so if you have any questions, please see me or Reverend Alex if you see him. And our last announcement, 45 years ago, 45 years ago, 12 people gathered, and the rest is history. Well, on October 6th, we will be celebrating our 45th anniversary at the Peterson uh, Automotive Museum. I selected this slide here because Automotive Museum, really? Honey, they can put on a spread like nobody's business with vintage cars to boot. So um, it'll be a beautiful backdrop. It'll be a beautiful people. Uh, the Reverend um, uh, Jean Robinson, uh, Episcopal Bishop, will be our keynote speaker. Uh, Reverend Dr. Nancy Wilson, Reverend Dr. Troy Perry um, will also be in attendance. So it'll be a great time had by all. You can see Don Robinson. You can, she, and she's in the back. If you have any questions, she can help you with that. Tickets are, gonna, are available so you can see her and she can hook you up. And there's more to come. So read your bulletins, but most of all, let's turn to one, one, one another and welcome each other to this place, to this home, this place we call Founders. Please remain standing as you are able for the reading of the scripture. This morning's reading comes from Acts 2, uh, verses 44 through 47. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And God added to their number daily those who were being saved. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks be to God. Amen. to see all of you here. Since we came back from General Conference, um, we've been doing a sermon series on BMCC. And at first we talked about what does it mean for founders to be MCC? What does it mean for us to be a church committed to spirituality and sexuality? What does it mean for founders to be here in LA versus an MCC around the world somewhere? And we have to remember that even at Founders, we have all our friends who are watching us online. And so that's a unique opportunity for us as well. The second week, could you get me another tissue for my glasses, please? Um, thanks. I can't see you, but I'll preach to you anyway. Um, the second week was Be Justice. And we talked about 
uh, the activities that we do to create justice for marriage equality, to end racism, and what our call and our commitment is to that. And this week we're talking about being community, be community. And I'll let you know, MCCs around the world are really good about doing community, right? We're really good at doing community. We have the Brown Bag Ministry. We have HopeNet Food Pantry. We do a lot of stuff. And so what we're being invited to at this point is to transition from doing community to being community. And so I wanted to share a little story with you about my time at Children's Hospital as a chaplain and how that was a really hard lesson for me to go from doing spiritual care, doing ministry, to being present with people. I had a 19-year-old patient who was dying from cancer, and he had a six-month-old son and a girlfriend. And so I went into the room thinking, okay, I'm going to offer a prayer, I'm going to offer communion, I'm going to offer all these different activities. I'll offer a listening ear. Because I knew he was a Catholic person, and he would probably um, be familiar with these things, and they would add value to him. And what I found when I walked into the room was a very skinny, unhealthy person sitting in a window, very quiet, with his head down. And I said, what can I do for you? He just kind of stared at me. Do you want communion? No. Do you want to talk? No. Do you want me to leave? No. (laughs) So we just kind of stayed and stared at each other. And I got really uncomfortable, and I panicked, so I left. Right? I don't know how to just be, like, how do you just be? How do you just be something? And so I left, and a week later or so, he wasn't doing so well, and I got invited back. So I went in, and I said, oh, what can I offer you? Do you want communion? No. (laughs) Do you want to talk? No. Do you want to pray? No. Do you want me to go? No. You can stay. Okay. (laughs) So I pulled up a chair, and I just sat with him. And after maybe 15 or 20 minutes, he said, okay, thanks. And then I left. And for me, just being present with him was a hard, uncomfortable space to be because I wanted to do something. I wanted to fix it. I wanted to lighten the load. I wanted to do something for him. And all he needed was for me to be with him. Right? So we've been doing community for a long time. For 45 years, we've been doing community. We're radically inclusive. You know, we're welcoming, we're all these awesome things. And so now we get to invite ourselves to be community. And I have three easy ways for us to practice being community. Are you interested? (laughs) Okay. Well, actually, they're not easy, but they're worthwhile. So if you're ready to make a commitment, I'm going to share them with you. And even if you're not, you're going to hear them anyway, and then you can commit later if you want. The first step, how many of you have heard this quote? The best way to make a friend is to, okay. So the best way to make community is to, okay, simple, right? So how do we actually do that? Many of us go through the week and we walk up to people, especially on Sundays at church, and we say, oh my gosh, it's so great to see you. How are you? How are you? I'm good. Okay. Next. Hey, it's so great to see you. How was your week? I was fine. Thanks. Okay, next. Right? Don't we? Don't we? And when people ask us, how are we doing? We just kind of say, oh, you know. And we move on. So today we're going to practice being community. But you have to listen to the instructions first, okay? When I say go, everybody is going to get up from their seat Go to somebody you either don't know or only know their name and you don't know anything else about them. Introduce yourself and ask them, how was your week? That's part one. Part two, I see you shaking your head. Part two (laughs) is that when you answer, you can't give any fluff. You have to give real stuff. Okay? So it could be something as simple as, I was really busy at work this week, and that stressed me out. Or I was really busy at work this week, and that made me happy because I like to be busy. Or for me, I took my mom to Vegas, and we had a great time. Right? Give, give something, not just say I'm okay. Okay? And for the people who are viewing online, you're part of our community as well, so you can go to the website and start reading through some testimonials of people that have posted or offer your own post. We're going to have three minutes. 
Are you ready to be community? We're going to practice. Everybody up, let's go. Fourth? Awesome. And I, and I did um, membership classes. Awesome. What's your name? Abigail. Abigail, nice to meet you. Reverend Melissa. You guys are getting carried away with this. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and return back to our seats. Congratulations on all your newfound friends. It's very exciting. Let's take our seats. Did you guys feel the energy in the place rise? very exciting, very interconnected. And what's awesome is that just by a little bit of conversation and just slowing down to be honest about who we are and where we are and taking the time to really care about what other people are going through and how they're doing, it, it solidifies the bonds between us. So even in three minutes, every single one of us as we leave today, this community is already tighter. This community is already being more than it was before. So I wanted to thank you for that. And you get to continue to practice this throughout the coming weeks by walking up to people who you don't know and just introducing yourself and saying, how are you doing? And by modeling that, we get to invite other people into being community too. You guys are very active back there in like the seventh row. It's great. So that's step number one or principle number one that you can use. The second principle is um, I find always valuable and very difficult to learn as well. And it goes like this. It's better to maintain right relationship than to be right. It's better to maintain right relationship than to be right. And what that requires of us is to have a commitment to community, a commitment to relationship that outweighs our commitment to getting our own needs met, right? So instead of giving tons of examples of what that looks like, I'll give you techniques on how to be in right relationship instead of being right, because um, I'm a professional at being right. So I can <laughs> teach you this. Um, <laughs> That's my colleague acknowledging my rightness. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so on simple things, like if you're in a car with somebody and um, they're going the wrong way and you try to tell them the right way and they still don't listen to you, you could get into a fight, couldn't you? Real quick. Everybody could get upset. Um, and so what I do in those moments is I say, okay. 
and I let them get lost. And then at some point, they're gonna realize that they're not in the right place, and they're frustrated, and then I'll just give them directions. And then either, whether they say, oh, you are right or not, it doesn't matter, because the relationship is intact, and now they know that they can trust what I say, right? And I didn't have to convince them of anything. Another great example, I have permission to use this with, <laughs> with Jane. You know, she's been traveling on the road singing for almost a month, about a month, and um, I knew that she was gonna be in worship today um, leading on the keyboard for us. And there were a lot of people on staff that were telling me, no, she's not, she's not gonna be back. She's not coming back till the next week. Okay. <laughs> right? I mean, I don't need to call Jane or text Jane and say, Jane, are you gonna be there on Sunday? These people don't believe me. I didn't, but look, Jane's here today, and so now I get to stand up here and be right. <laughs> right? And I'm still, in re- <laughs> I'm still in relationship with everybody who didn't believe me. I <laughs> know, now, now the relationship's kinda rocky. Um, <laughs> but my point is, you know, there are bigger, bigger issues in our lives where we have conflict in relationships and friendships, um, where we have our own commitments to life and, and, and what are non-negotiable for us. And sometimes it's okay to not be in agreement with people as long as you still maintain relationship because at some point it's all going to come around. It's all going to come around. And so we get to be committed to this community. Now the third principle is called the doobie doobie doo principle. <laughs> doobie doobie doo. Right? You can sing it, you can laugh it, you can do whatever you want, but it's basically this. You do something, practice it, and then you be it. Then you do some more, and then you be some more. And then you do, and then you be, and then you doobie doobie doo. <laughs> it's very simple. <laughs> I mean, it's not earth-shattering, the stuff I have to teach you. I just, it's like a refresher. So I was at a um, Young Professionals event the other night with a bunch of people I had no, never met before, and we were doing a sing-along at the Disney concert hall. Uh, 80s hits. It was, it was so much fun. It was great. And this woman who I hadn't met before um, that day, uh, I went in my clerics, so it was a dead giveaway that I was clergy, and she said to me, what is it like to be a minister? And I started talking and I was like, oh, I get to do communion, I get to do this, I get to do that, I get to do this, I get to do that, I get to do. And she was like, yeah, but what's it like to be a minister? And I was like, oh man, this is my own sermon. Like, (laughs) I'm getting called out on it. And so I started to think and I just sat there for a minute and I said, you know what, it's interesting because I've been a minister for long enough, I don't remember what it's like to not be. I've been a Christian long enough that I don't know what it's like to not be. So it's hard for me to answer the question, what is it like to be that? Because it's just who I am, right? Like, for a while you practice driving, you learn some basic techniques. Used to be 10 and two, I think it's nine and three now, right? I mean, the rules change, so does theology, right? Oh, no no amens on that one? Anyway, so you practice driving for a while, right? And then at some point, you're a driver, right? It's just we take on that identity after we do the practices for a long time. And so my invitation to us today is why don't we practice doing community, practice being community, and then at some point, we just are. And we're at that deeper level where we get to know each other, where we get to support each other, where we get to love each other, where we get to expand in number, like the scripture says, because we spend time together, because we break bread together, because we share our lives with each other, as beautiful or as messy as they are. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I've been messy. This week I was messy, (laughs) real messy. I hyperventilated, I was crying so much because my heart was broken about something. And for me, I don't want people to know that side of me. I just want them to see me up here, smiling, preaching the word of God, right? And I want people to see me as strong, as trustworthy as all these things. And so I don't show that side of me. But I had three people who called me that night because, I, because they just sensed that something was wrong with me. And just by having those friendships to talk and just to say what it was that was going on, I survived. And it became lighter and it became more tolerable. And now I know that there are people who are there for me regardless whether I'm a failure as a minister, whether I'm a huge success, doesn't matter. They are there because they love me. They're there because they're my community. And the thing is, I get to, I see you, I get to be that for them too. And what's interesting is that 
oftentimes, we choose to be that for other people, right? All of us do this. We prefer to take care of others. We prefer to be strong for others. And we just don't allow people to do it for us. So I challenge you, allow people to be there for you, right? Be vulnerable. Just share your life because it makes it so much more rich and so much more profound because we get to be community. Now, the scripture said that they multiplied in numbers. They added to their numbers daily. Did you know that this church has a vision that by 2016 will be a church of 1,500 people? Did you know that? Did you know that our goal is to have 1,100 worshipers online? We already have 500. And to have 400 people in person on a weekend. How do we accomplish that? We get to be that community. We get to be with each other. We get to invite people into the space. We get to expand our lives and share our lives with people. And I think, too, it's important for us to remember in being community that we all kind of show up in our best selves. And like we did our greeting today and actually asked how each other were and he committed to giving honest answers about that, there are so many moments where people come in. We all come into this place with, with life, with a burden, with a success, with, a, with a, something that's heavy for us or, or some new life that just came to pass for us that we've been waiting for for so long. And it's important, and I invite you, to just bring it into the space and to share it with people because there's something about bearing witness to your own life and your testimony and something about allowing another person to bear witness to it that creates the kind of community that allows us to be justice, allows us to be MCC, and allows us to be God's hands and feet in the world. So, do you remember the three principles on how to be community? If you want to make a friend... Be a friend. What's the second one? Ah, better to maintain right relationship than to be right, even when people lie about you. Right? I mean, you can take it as deep as you want to. It can be about giving directions to a friend, or it can be about real life stuff. And the third principle? Do we do we do? (laughs) That's actually my favorite one. (laughs) I learned it from a folk singer in Omaha. I thought she was kind of weird, but (laughs) now I get to live by it. Do it, be it, do it, be it, do it, be it. So let's take our culture and our heritage and our history of doing community, and now let's go ahead and become community. Are you in? Amen. Amen.
Happy Sunday. <laughs> My name is Dawn Robinson, and I am the vice moderator here at Founders MCC, and I'm on the I'm the board member on duty today. Um, I've previously shared with y'all how Founders MCCLA has impacted my life, how I believe we are all connected, and I shared the message from Kung Fu Panda 2, which I refer to as the gospel according to Poe, um, where he said, all that stuff that happened in the past doesn't really matter. What happens is where you choose to be now. So I promised last time I was up here that I would share the second half of my story of the difference that you all have made in my life. And so here goes. Um, I moved to LA nine years ago in 2004. I was recently divorced and I wanted to change. And I chose LA because like a million other people, I was pursuing acting. I drove from Hotlanta with all of my possessions with somehow fit into my day woo. <laughs> and I arrived here in mid-March, no, no job, no money, but I was open and ready to receive and I had friends and family here. So I lived in a one bedroom apartment with three other people. Mm -hmm. Someone asked me what that was like and I said, you remember Dante's fourth inferno of hell? <laughs> um, I moved six times in four months before settling in West Hollywood. And when I moved here from Atlanta, I was spoiled by my church there. It was like a mini concert and then the pastor seemed like he was speaking directly to me. And so I was looking for a church home because I needed, I knew I needed that foundation here. I tried three churches and I was kicked out of the drama group in one. Um, those early days were a little strange for me, but I slowly began to find my way. In 2007, I discovered MCCLA on Franklin. Lewis Bailey had the biggest smile, and I miss him so much, but he was so awesome, and everyone there just was so nice. You feel God's love when you walk into this place. All right. Yes. I immediately felt like I was home. I read something on Friday that Reverend Neal wrote in this week's newsletter about one of the fundamental pieces of being a church is about being a community and support, supporting one another through good times and bad times. And it's so very true in this place. Every time I enter and leave this temple, I feel blessed. All right. Your acceptance of me, your prayers, your love for me, it's tangible and incomparable. In 2004, I would have never pictured my life the way it is now. I belong to this fabulous church. I live in a great neighborhood with amazing neighbors. You prayed me through getting an MBA, because trust me, I'm not good at math. <laughs> I have a great corporate job where I am loved, and in a couple of months, I'll be on a reality television show. Yay. So. What we do as a church makes me feel like we're making the world a better place. On top of all the other good things we do in our community, annually we have this back to school drive and we make kids feel better about going back to school because they have stuff that everybody else has and they don't have to feel different. And then, God bless time flies, we're gonna have a toy drive. <laughs> it's just amazing. We help children through love, and we show our love not through words, but through our actions here. So please consider giving of your time and your talent and assist our many, many ministries that we have here. And please give generously of your treasures this morning to assist the church in blessing others. Thank you.
God, our provider, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to bless others with the resources you have provided. We are grateful for your continued blessings and we ask that you would bless this treasure and that it would be used in a way to be a blessing to others and to glorify you. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. around the table this morning as community, would you please pray with me? You open our eyes to a world which would sell the poor for the price of an SUV, or trade the needy for a pair of Gucci's, or haul the weak into Judge Judy's court. So come, God of justice, to make us as vocal as Amos. You watch us as we fill our days with the endless work, as we keep a list of all of our worries, never marking any off, as we get easily distracted by others' inactions. So come, creation's oldest child, to make us as still as Mary. Yes. You take notice of how quickly we can overlook those who hunger, for their empty hearts to be filled, those who long for a family to welcome them, those who thirst for that relationship which will revive their souls. So come, reconciling love to make us all welcoming as Martha. Yes. God in community, holy in one, come to make us your people, even as we pray as Jesus taught us. there in the Bible, men and women who are prone to sin as we are. Every page, every story reveals to us brokenness. Mm -hmm. Yet every page and every story tells us of the one who longs to make us whole. Yes. In a moment of silence, let us confess our sins and clear the way for God's reconciling love to work within us.
So as we come together in community, please join me as we pray our community prayer of confession. Forgive us, reconciling love. Sit us down at Jesus' feet so we may learn the balance of life tend for us. Then, and only then, we can set aside our gages and offer our gifts to our neighbors we can stop licking at our hurts to bring healing to others. We can reach out to the welcome our sisters and brothers, even as we have been welcomed into our heart through Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ Jesus comes to reconcile us to God so we can be reconciled to one another. Recreated in God's image, we are made whole. When we are in Christ, everything becomes new. Our past is just that, our past. Thanks be to God. We will go forth and live as reconciled people. Amen. Amen. My friends, the God who embraces us is with you. And also, also with you. you. Children of God, lift your hearts to the one who makes you welcome in every moment. We lift them to the Lord our God, who is our host at this meal. People of God, offer your praise and thanksgiving to the one who comes bringing new life to us. The sad dirges of our lives become praise songs for the one who makes us whole. And so we join our voices with all who have gone before us and all who will come after us as we sing your praises forever. So it is, friends, that we remember. We remember that meal, that last meal that Jesus shared with his community, his community of followers, of family, of friends, and even betrayers. All were a part of his community. And he took that bread. It was the dessert of that meal, the afikomen of the Seder supper. He took it and he raised it, he blessed it, and he broke it. Here, here is my body, which is broken for you, given to you freely and fully. All that I ask is that in the days and years ahead, when you break bread with one another, remember me. And in a similar fashion, he took the cup. He also gave thanks and praise. It was passed to everyone who was there as it is passed to you and to me this day. Into this cup is poured forth my blood, my life essence, all of who I am. Drink fully, drink fully, for this is a new covenant, new salvation, a new life. So that indeed, as you drink fully and are filled with the Holy Spirit, you are filled with Christ, you are filled with God, all sins indeed are forgiven. Let us pray. Send your Holy Spirit upon the gifts of the bread and the cup, yes. and upon those who receive these gifts. May the bread which is broken make us one with each other. May the cup which is shared be the healing we need. Mm -hmm. Then, when we are nourished by your grace, send us forth to be your servants, setting aside our worries to welcome the weak and forsaken, letting go of our grudges so we, so we may receive. The grace the stranger brings to us, releasing our fears and doubts so we may, may embrace your steadfast love. 
that when all time comes to an end and we are brought together at your table through him who has reconciled us to you and who holds us together in his grace, we will sing our praises through all eternity. God in community, holy and one. Amen. Amen. And friends here at Founders Metropolitan Community Church, as with all MCCs around the world, kind of cool. We all share one thing in common. Well, a couple. One is our love of God, of Christ, of spirit. And the other is that we offer an open communion. It means you need not be a member of this church or of any church to come forward and take part in this meal. For 45 years, that's been said from altars, and we're saying it again today. So whether you are here in this room or whether you are at home, we are all welcome to the table set by God. It is our tradition here that as the ushers guide us forward to servers in the front and take the elements, dip it in non-alcoholic grape juice, place it upon your tongue, or you may take and dip and receive yourself, and then we offer a brief blessing with you and for you. Whether you come forward or whether you stay where you are at home, whether you participate by breaking bread or by just being in silence or in prayer or celebration, this is a reminder that the community came together every day. They broke bread and they ate with one another and their numbers increased daily. There is a reason we break bread. There is a reason we take part. And that is to remember that we are all a part of the community of Christ. Amen? Amen. May the servers and acolytes please join me. May the ushers guide us. May we keep this feast one with the other.
And while we were praying, while I was praying during communion, I became so grateful for the example that Jesus taught us in bringing people together to just be one with the other, to accept each other as we are, where we are, for who we are. And I want to thank each and every one of you for choosing to follow God into this place, into a life of faith, into this community as Founders MCC. And I invite each one of us to continue to be honest about who we are and where we are and who God is to us. Amen. So my friends, as we go from this place today, we get to be doobie dooby doers. Wow. I might have to preach that whole sermon again for you guys. <laughs> but I trust that as you are part of this community of MCC, that you would be safe, that you would be um, trusted, that you would feel respected, and that all, there's this wonderful experience for you here so that as you come into community with us, we can be even more through your presence. So today, let's all go in peace. Amen.
us today. By participating with us online, you are an extension of this church's membership ministry, our extended fellowship. Whether you're tuning in from Los Angeles, London, Tokyo, or Zimbabwe, wherever you are in the world, we are so excited to embrace you, to hear from you, and to pray for you. All of the people you've just seen in this broadcast, not just the ministers and the choir, but every person sitting on those pews, we are here for you. So please, why don't you connect with us? Interact with us. We have four ways you can do that. Telephone, email, Facebook, and Twitter. And all of those links are located at the bottom of every webpage of our website at mccla.org. With your help, we can not just continue, but expand and reach a greater number of people with God's love through this ministry. Be a video angel amongst us by supporting this ministry through our donate link located just under the support menu in the upper right corner of any page of our website. Your participation is very important. And I want to invite you to write to me and let me know how I can be in prayer and praise with you. Even though you are not here in our worship center, you are still a part of MCCLA. Email me directly at revneal at mccla.org. May God bless your life. And I look forward to welcoming you back many, many times to MCCLA and our weekly live broadcast. You are